Hello and welcome to another episode of The Genius Podcast. My name is Karen Doyle, your host and founder of The Genius Project, an initiative for Catholic women designed to support and resource you towards growth in all areas of your life, personal, spiritual and professional. We seek to do this through the Catholic Women's Masterclass, our Catholic coaching programs for women, our resources and online summits, as well as the Genius Podcast. If you are interested in finding out about any of these initiatives, please visit our website www.geniusproject.co or come and follow us on Instagram, genius underscore project underscore daily, on Facebook or on the Genius Project YouTube channel. So we are about to enter into the third week of Advent. I wonder whether or not you have been able to carve out time and space and just hit that pause button to really start to think about, reflect on how you are going to encounter Christ this Christmas. On this week's episode of the Genius Podcast, I'm joined by Father Ken Barker from the Missionaries of God's Love Order here in Canberra. Father Ken has played a very important role in my life over many years. I actually met him when my dad took me to his first Mass when I was 12 years of age. And so I have sat under the wisdom and the formation and the spiritual fatherhood of Father Ken for many, many years. He was on our podcast back in our Lenten series, and he joins us again today as we explore this theme around how we can prepare our hearts for Christ this Advent. So ladies, I hope you enjoy this conversation with Father Ken Barker. Father Ken, welcome back to the Genius Podcast. It's wonderful to have you joining us again for this Advent conversation. Thanks, Karen. It's great to be with you again. Yeah. Well, I was just saying to you before that we had you on the podcast back for our Lenten study, and it was one of our most listened to episodes. The women really loved your wisdom. So seems a long time ago, yes. I know it does, doesn't it? The year's been so busy and we're sort of hurtling towards Christmas Day. I know I just shops earlier and the kids are on holidays for us and it's it's getting very busy. But I think, you know, obviously it's Advent and we're wanting to make a good Advent and prepare our hearts in the midst of the busyness for Christ to come to us in a new way. I'm just wondering if you can share with us a little bit about how, as like lay people, we can, I guess, experience a stillness and a peace in the midst of all the chaos in the lead up to Christmas, all those practical ways. Yes, it's somewhat ironic, isn't it, that this is in a way the busiest time of the year in the culture around us. Mm. And yet it's the time when the church is asking us to quieten down and to have time aside, as it were. And it's a very difficult thing to do with all the demands upon us at this time, I guess, your family demands and uh, sometimes business demands too, isn't it, really? Yes. Um, and so we can be very distracted. Uh, and so it's a question of how do I centre myself in the Lord at this time? I think uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary can be a great um, way into this because you know, she was cherishing the child in her womb at this time, right? And any mother knows what a blessed thing it is to cherish the child in your womb <laughs> yeah. and, and to be very um, attentive to his presence and awake to his presence and alive to the child within. So something of that contemplative experience, you know, uh, we're told that Mary, she treasured these things and pondered them in her heart. So she had a contemplative spirit. Something of that we need to capture at this time of Advent. And I'm not saying it's easy because everyone's under a bit of pressure. You know, we have to get everything ready for Christmas, but it seems to defeat the purpose of we don't really you know, put yes. Jesus at the centre. Absolutely. Because <laughs> he's the reason for the season. Huh? That's right. And so it's how do we do that? Mm. Finding a little time in the day maybe, just a quiet space where you can just focus and just um, maybe have a scripture text that just helps you to just be quietened down in spirit. It's not easy, but uh, try and find a time like that uh, where you can just allow the Lord to be with you and to ha- allow gratitude to rise in your heart for his presence with you. The Blessed Virgin had that yeah, gratitude, didn't she? When she visited Elizabeth, you know, uh, she had so much joy that that really John the Baptist left in the womb of Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, but so joy led to joy. And, and um, 
but then also she had a deep gratitude for the child within her. And my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, because he looked on the lowliness of his handmaid. Just like that, we know our weakness, we know our brokenness, as Mary did, but we've been given so much. And so maybe to cultivate that attitude of gratitude uh, and uh, allow the, the joy within to, to rise, it's a, it, the joy of living, the joy of, of, of the presence of Christ within. You see, uh, Mary knew the child within her. It was very sort of tangible, I guess. But we have Christ within us. Huh? You know, he dwells in us. We receive him in Holy Communion. And and we know he, he lives within us. But oftentimes, as St. Augustine said, we're outside of our souls, falling on the things of God's creation <laughs> and trying to sort of find hope there when the hope that we really need is within. Yeah. It's he is already within me, St. Augustine said, you know, and, and I, I didn't realize. And then he had that moment of breakthrough when his eyes were opened, as it were, the inner eyes of faith were opened. And when he began to hear the word of God in a new way, and he says, you broke through my deafness and you opened my eyes of blindness. And now I long for you. So to allow that longing for the Lord to rise within you, it's, um, it's a grace from God, isn't it? It's a gift that he wants to bestow it upon us. But so, so we're so often so distracted and so falling upon the things outside of us that we're not really in touch with the one who lives within you. And so to just quiet down, have that little moment where you're just aware of Christ within and, and just allow yourself to relate with him. He's your friend. You know, he's there uh, to, to really bring to you the comfort and the peace that only he can bring. Mm. So beautiful. I love the way that you've just started that, actually. And the visitation is such a beautiful place to begin. And, yes. and I think you're right, like tapping into that experience as women, I guess, of childbearing and and the awareness of the child growing within the womb yes for women who aren't like there is a sense I guess or who haven't had biological children themselves they still have that sense of spiritual motherhood and of deep care for a true, true. And, and like look at me I, I haven't had a child <laughs> But you're you're a great <laughs> spiritual father, Father Ken. <laughs> I said I think I said this on the last podcast, but I came to your first charismatic mass when I was twelve years old with my dad. So it's beautiful. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you've definitely been one of those father figures for myself. Right. Oh, so well, really we're getting on in years. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> what's that? We're getting on in years. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I think that experience. I, I really love what you said there about tapping into what it would be like reflecting on, I guess, that experience of Mary and Elizabeth. Yes. And it's such a beautiful starting point because, mm. I mean, I know myself, this is the busiest time for our business yeah. of the year. Mm. Um, and we've got three kids. It seems that you pay more school fees and you get more holidays <laughs> because they all finish <laughs> so early. So we've got the kids home as well, plus preparing for Christmas. And yes. I caught myself the other day starting to get on that spin of like, whoa, this is like too much, too many things. And I, I did exactly that. We've got a beautiful print of the visitation in our lounge room above right. the fireplace. Yes. And it's funny you mention it because I was sitting on the couch just having a cup of tea, which I rarely do. And I looked up and that's the image that captured me was just that stillness, that quietness, and just trying to connect with, I guess the presence of God in, in yeah, the definitely his presence within, which we forget mm. because we're so busy about many things outside of ourselves. Yes. And just to pause and to just quieten down and, and um, try to let other things swim by, as it were, and just touch into uh, the inner uh, self where you will find the Lord, really. Yes. That's what Jesus said, isn't it? Going to that quiet place within you. Don't be babbling like the pagans, but just go into the quiet place within, and he's to be found there. Yeah. That's what I think it's. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the beautiful thing about the the pregnancy uh, image is, of course, it's an expectant, <laughs> and there's an expectancy. Huh? There's a waiting. There's a longing for a fulfillment, and each of us uh, with to Christ within us, and His presence within. 
really does foster that expectancy for more in our lives than what we presently have. There's always more. There's a longing and a waiting. So prayer is, is rather a longing in the heart, really, for what we yet do not have. But God wishes to bestow upon us, and the more we actually yearn and long for him, you know, and, and cry out from deep within in an authentic way, then the more he's able to fill us with his presence and, and give us a deeper hope within than we presently have. It's... um. It's a beautiful gift, isn't it, this gift of prayer? It is. Uh, it's, <laughs> you're, and you're so big on that. I know sitting under, I guess, just your homilies and your formation <laughs> over many years now, um, just that sense of what prayer actually is, how we can encounter Christ in, in a new way. Because if we've been walking this faith journey for many years, which I have, and I, I know many of the women that I work with have, sometimes you know it, but you don't know it. Yes, and, and I guess the question for you is how, if we've been walking that journey, can we be refreshed? How can we actually tap into that encounter, that new hope, that new expectant hope and joy that we had earlier yeah. in our faith journey? Look, I think the most important thing I'd say in response to that, Karen, would be to be yourself. Because sometimes we think when we come to a prayer time that we have to sort of put on a show before God and, and make ourselves look good before him. We go, and, and we know deep down we're not looking very good at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a bit of a mess within. So come in your mess. You know, come as you are. Come just in, in, in your own uh, awareness of, of your struggle, whatever it is, your tiredness, your anxiety, you know, whatever your experience is. Be real with the Lord and he will meet you there. He meets you in your being real. If you're trying to put on a show like the guy in the, the temple who was up the front saying, look at me, here I am, I'm doing this for you, Lord. Uh, the Lord's not interested in that. He was more interested in the fellow down the back who was just crying out, have mercy on me, I'm a sinner. Because he's being real. The Lord wants you to be real. That's the first thing, most important thing, uh, that we don't have to pretend and put on a show and say, like, oh, I heard, I read about this saint, so this is how I'm going to sort of pray like this saint prayed. No, it's you. You're unique. And the Lord wants to meet you in your unique self, just as you are, uh, without any pretenses. Uh, you know, if you're having a rotten day, well, that's how you come to God. I've had a bad hair day. Here I am, Lord. <laughs> I'm angry. I'm bitter. I'm twisted. Yeah. But And he will meet you there because he he, he wants to meet you in your in who you are, just as you are, your existential self. It's like Teresa of Avila used to, I think it was Teresa of Avila as well, who said, you know, it's first of all, um, you know, know who you are. That is like in your existential self. <laughs> At this point in time, what's really happening within you? And then turn to him and know who he is. Mm. And he is within you. And he is the saviour, he's the redeemer, he's the one who lifts your heart, he's the one who sets you free, he's the one who heals, he's the one who delivers. He, he wants to do all that in you and wants to, wants to especially draw you into a deep, personal, living, loving relationship with him. But you can only do it with you, not with your pretend self, but your real self. <laughs> yeah. And it's such a good reminder. It's such a good reminder. And, and I think, you know, some Times we can get so busy doing for God, we forget that being with Him, and, and like yes. you said, He just wants our presence. That's yes, that's yeah. We want all the ministries, and I mean they're great and they're an important part of our evangelization, our mission. But at True. the core, He just He wants our presence. He wants that deep relationship with that's us. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think He wants that for women, especially. I think. We can get so so much on that treadmill of life, and I think oh, yeah. you know, whether it's work or ministry, or children raising kids, and the older they get, the bigger the problems. <laughs> and it's, yeah, and, and also I find like as we get to a particular stage in life, I found this in my life, and and a lot of my friends too, that things that we thought we dealt with many years ago seem to resurface in, in certain yes. when the pressure comes on. And I've heard women say, 
this can't be, I, I've, I'm done with this. I've dealt with it. I, I don't need, I don't want to go there again. Yes. Because they, they feel like they have to keep going. Another thing I, I see in women is if I open the floodgates and let Jesus in, if I open like my heart, there's so much pain there. Uh-huh. I'm, not, I'm actually not going to be able to cope with that. Uh-huh. So, question for you I guess is can you speak into those couple of struggles with women the woman who thinks they've dealt with everything um but then those issues start to come up again yes and then the woman who is afraid I guess to go there because you know we have we carry so much there's so we have to show up for mm-hmm. our husbands for work for children for other people um then I think a lot of women feel that they don't have that luxury or that space to actually go deep into their heart so i'm giving you two questions there so why don't we start with (laughs) one there what what do you what would you say to the woman who knows that there is so much below the surface yes but because of life or hardness or just pressure she feels she can't go to that place and specifically go to that place during Advent because I think the church gives us these beautiful seasons where we can yes. pause. Um, and this I think is the season of hope, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's really hope that's not just sort of a wishful thinking, right. oh, maybe things will be better, but it's a hope that's based on what Jesus has done for us, that he's come and become one of us, knitted into our human condition. So I, I don't quite know how to answer your question, but I, I do think that it's, it's connected to what I was just saying, that if you can pour out your heart to the Lord, honestly, he will meet you there. Sometimes what stops us, of course, is our poor understanding of who he is. Mm. That we need to understand him as the merciful Lord who's ready to embrace you the one who loves you tenderly and and completely is on your side and there's no condemnation in his heart. So a lot of it's connected to how I see him uh, and it's good to pick up the scriptures and look at those texts that really minister the love of God, really. Uh, that's a key thing is just being able to rest in the love of God. He doesn't want to shape you up. Sometimes we feel we have to be shaped up somewhere or other and be perfect before he'll meet us. But rather than going that direction and feel that we're not, none of us are like that. Now, I often will go to the chapel or some quiet place and I just sort of am there feeling really rotten and, and just let myself be rotten <laughs> with the Lord. And when you're with him, you know, he he's understands he, he accepts, he ministers uh, love uh, unconditionally. You know, he touches into that deepest area. And sometimes it can help, of course, to have a friend who um, you sort of share this with. In that sharing relationship, then, they can minister to you the love of God. Because oftentimes, unfortunately, because of our own self-concept being so poor, we find it difficult to actually... Uh, alone with the Lord, experience him. But if you've got a good friend who really loves the Lord and you open your heart to that friend and get them to pray with you, then they minister the love of God into that deepest wound in the heart, you see. Um, and that that's a beautiful gift, isn't it, when that, that happens? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I think I've shared on the podcast with somebody else once, but there was a, a situation that happened where I felt quite wounded by something somebody had said and I went to a friend very good friend and um, she just prayed with me and uh, it was such a beautiful companionship yes of just coming alongside me and praying with me praying that I could forgive and I think it truly was the power of her presence in that moment exactly. where I, I absolutely released and forgave that next that's beautiful time. yeah but I, I was that beautiful friend and sister in the Lord and um, she's been there at many key points in my life. Exactly. Just to pray. And yep. just... Yeah, that's a real precious treasure to have, actually, mm. and just to open your heart. And opening your heart to the Lord and then opening your heart in the presence of another, mm. you know, who, who understands you, accepts you, unconditionally loves you and will minister the Lord's love to you. That's a beautiful gift, yeah. It is. I remember somebody said, she said, I just need a Jesus with skin on. 
<laughs> and we forget also. So we're talking about how we can receive from others. But then the other side of that coin is then how can we be givers and impart yes. of that gift ourselves? True, true, yes. Yeah. So it's a good, I often find Advent's a beautiful time. I, I spend a lot of time reflecting on just how I am carrying the presence of Christ within me. So yes. with Jonathan, my husband, with my children, with That's people beautiful. that I encounter, because that whole image of the visitation of him coming to us, yes. coming into our hearts, I, I meditate on that image quite a bit during Advent. And That's beautiful, yeah. yeah, yeah it really actually does change how you show up for people and with people. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so, Father Ken, another question for you, going back to these scenarios. So um, the woman who feels that she has dealt with issues, but they keep coming up. So mm-hmm. I think when we do create that time and space for the Lord, sometimes we get really shocked at what, emerges because we we, we push it down just to keep going and we hustle through each day but when you do create that pause and that time and space Mm. there's a lot that's going on below the surface I was was coaching a woman this morning and we were just working through this coaching model of processing thoughts and emotions and she was just she was just in tears yeah it was just blood of things that just came up and she was like where on earth did that come from (laughs) but what would you say in terms of speaking into I guess that experience that women have yes I think it's very important that you're in a safe place when that happens and as I say like if you have someone you really trust then that can come up more easily can't it and surface and then you can be a blubbering mess and uh, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, so having that sort of context is really, really helpful. But if it, ha- it comes up in your own personal journey uh, by yourself, it, it can be very frightening and we just push it down again because it seems too hard to handle. It. But um, to be able to experience the Lord with you in that, as you said, like looking at a, an image can help really or... Um, just having um uh you know some some way that you can um just uh get it out really I, usually it's with somebody else is the best start really yes. um and board your eyes out or whatever it is you need to do um we all have those moments don't we really yes, we do yeah and and um, I sometimes I think people can look at leaders or people who are in positions of leadership and think they have all of these things worked out. It's a big but, danger for leaders, actually. Yeah. They can think that way too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just life is just these endless roller coaster of ups and downs of growth. Yes. And I remember once someone said life, you know, is all about is a journey. It's a growing journey and an education in love. And I was like, well, I'm gonna graduate. <laughs> you know, this is early in my faith journey where, you know, you work through certain things, but Really, our whole life is this journey deeper into the heart of the Father through Jesus. It certainly is. And there's something about, you just mentioned the experience of the Father. That's very critical, of course. Um, I know in my own personal life that's been really important. And I had to repent of some of the attitudes I had towards my own earthly dad after he died, even, um, so that my heart could open up more to the Heavenly Father. And sometimes we can have wounds within us uh, because of our own parenting and being sort of not sufficiently, um, you know, full as it could have been. And, and, uh, and so that, that's an important issue too. Um, whatever's gone on in our parenting, which it could be an obstacle to us being able to really trust the Father. And you see, because really we're meant to be living in the Father's arms at all times, aren't we really? And, and just nestling into the father's chest, as it were, and enjoying the presence of the father. But uh, oftentimes, that's people feel incapable of that because of um, maybe something went wrong in in the with their earthly parents. You know, um, certainly that was the case with me. But it certainly it changed though once I was able to repent of my own attitudes that went wrong with in relation to my own dad, and be able to sort of like open up in a new way. 
to the love that the Father God has for me. Yeah. It's, it is so important. I think um, a lot of the women in the Genius Project community and sisterhood are working through Sister Miriam James Heightland's book for her Advent book. And she's okay. following, she's looking at healing and restoration, but she starts by looking at the Blessed Mother, which we spoke about right. last yeah. week. And this week she's looking at St. Joseph and, and next the next two weeks, Jesus as a child. And I think what you're touching on there really ties into this week's chapter that we're working through on St. Joseph because yes. she looks at, I guess, the father wound and the wounds that yeah. we do in- inevitably encounter because our parents can't love us perfectly, only God loves mm-hmm. perfectly. And she looks at, I guess she's inviting women into, I guess, a prayerful examination of that relationship with their earthly father so that then they can, I guess, repent and be healed and experience the father heart of God, which I know if you had a signature message, it would be around the father heart of God and his mercy. That's true. And it's because... Um, I, I was had a great grace when the spirit started to move more powerfully in my life, to be able to see the wound, and and not to be sort of captive to it anymore, but um, but to be able to repent of of how I I myself had sort of unforgiveness towards my dad because of feeling he was I wasn't his favorite. The other two two sons were greater favorites than I was. <laughs> Uh, and I felt sort of overlooked and all of that sort of thing. So then being able to just repent of that and and turn back in, in a new way uh, to God our Father. And uh, it's and what's happened now is I have a deeper love for my earthly dad. He's gone to the Lord, but like it's really sort of opened up that again in a new way. And it's, it's wonderful. I'm so proud of him now and I, I rejoice in him and I'm, I'm grateful for him. Uh, but and all of that sort of brought me into a deeper place with Father God, and uh, so um, it's just wonderful, really. So, yeah. what was a I guess a key moment for you where you realised that you needed to do that extra work because you were obviously in, well into your priesthood. Um, I was well into the priesthood. Yes, I was, um, and uh, well, it was when I received the uh, baptism in the Spirit. And it was the new infilling of the Holy Spirit. I just had that revelation that there was an obstacle between me and Father God. And so I, uh, I, I asked some people to pray with me, and I, I prayed too. And I began to experience being lifted in the arms of the Father God. It's just beautiful, really. Um, you know, there's a Psalm 40 which says, I waited, I waited for the Lord. And he stood down to me. He lifted me up out of the miry clay. He set my feet on firm ground. And he put a new song into my mouth, a song of praise to my God. So that's what I was experiencing, being lifted up, as it were, and held by the Father. Because with my own earthly dad, he never did that to me. He never really held me like that. You know, except when he was drunk, he'd try and do it, and I'd push him away. (laughs) But um, that was like a real healing And then a a more significant thing happened when um, later than that, I was at the graveside just sort of praying because Dad had gone to the Lord. And and I started to weep. And the weeping was because I had images come to me of the past where I realised that Dad had given everything for us they gave us an education to the point of not even being able to sort of buy a, a motor car for himself. And the image that came was of this first car, and he was showing me the car. And, and I realized, and I was weeping and weeping and weeping, I realized how good a man he was, how he served so much to give us so much and then die very early of cancer. And so all of that was a freeing thing for me mm. that uh, helped me to rejoice more in God our Father and his goodness and uh, to me, uh, and that uh, yeah, it was a, a, a rounding off of the healing, as it were. Yeah, and it's so beautiful. I I think, like I said, I, walking with women, they think that when they've had their conversion or they encounter Jesus, that's when everything should be lifted and yeah. should be released. But mm. the Lord is so gentle, isn't He? And He just He's progressive. Yeah, yeah, and it's I mean, it is a lifelong. I'm sure you're still peeling off the layers in prayer. Exactly. 
So it's, I think it's sort of encouraging women along that journey, along their yes. faith walk that Jesus wants to bring restoration. He wants to bring healing. He wants us to live. He wants every person to live in freedom. That's true. Um, and I, I think it's a good reminder. And we're talking about Advent being a season of hope that women should have great hope that Jesus actually comes personally to each and every one of them Yes. to heal their hearts their wounds and and to restore them to the fullness he's created them to be. I I think it's so easy to lose sight of that. It certainly is. And to know that he rejoices over you. I never realized that God rejoiced over me, but he does. And to everyone who's listening, I want you to know that God rejoices over you personally, you know, very much. And, And he has a dream for you and for your life that's way beyond your imaginings. And he wants to fill you with that deep hope where there's an expectancy of so much more that only he can bring and as we allow that to happen and unfold in our lives and it, it's to do with healing isn't it he sets us free to be our true selves yeah yeah he does i just that scripture came to mind that you know we should all dare you know to imagine and hope and dream in the yes. lord and what he actually wants for us is far greater than what we want for ourselves exactly yeah, yeah. So it's so beautiful. So, Father Ken, this Advent, I guess, what are some of the practical things that women can do in these last couple of weeks? What would you suggest that they can do? Because it's not too late to make a good Advent. I think sometimes we get halfway through and we're like, ah, it's Advent. <laughs> well, I haven't been intentional. I mean, I, I love Christmas. I just love it. So my house gets decorated and just yes. so no one has a choice. It's yeah. We're still doing all the Advent rituals and ceremonies, which the kids really love. It's yes. funny, we have this little box that was given to Olivia when she was born, and it's every day you open and you pull out a part of the nativity. And love it, yeah. So my kids <laughs> call it doing Advent. They're like, aren't we doing Advent tonight? <laughs> <laughs> we read the scriptures. I think there's like there's some very practical things that we can do to yes. I guess, create space, create an atmosphere. Like, yes, we can go away to pray. Yes. What are some of the other practical things that people can do? Well, some people have an Advent candle, don't they? You know, but uh, I don't know whether any of the listeners have actually developed an Advent candle where you sort of light the candles. Um, we have it at the church, don't we? But you can have it in your in your home, really. Yes. And it's not too late to get into that, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're into the, what, the third week, is it? The, whatever it is. And we can test them. Uh, but then, like, it's good to uh, keep in touch with the readings of Advent, I think, really, uh, because there's a special reading every day um, that's just for Advent. And, then, of course, the Sunday readings as well. So you may not get every day reading, but maybe the Sunday readings. Just look at one of the Gospels, that are the Gospel for this particular Sunday, and begin to sort of, like, dwell upon that or one of the other readings. Something like that can be useful, I think. Yes. Um, you know, uh, I, I, the scriptures are the food for our life, really. And we need to be constantly sort of coming back to the scriptures and trying to sort of just dig into the, the word of God, I think, and allow it to shape us. Yes. Yeah, that's a very Thank practical you. thing, maybe. It's practical. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think those little rituals, developing those rituals, making, I guess, these seasons of the church extra special. Yes, yeah, that's right. And, and just in your environment where you are is, is a really big one. Uh-huh. Too. Mm. Oh, thank you so much, Father Ken. It's beautiful catching up with you. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. As we close, I'm just wondering whether or not you'd say a prayer for the Love women to, to lead Love them. To. Thank you. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this time we've had together. And I ask your blessing upon everyone who's listening to this podcast that each one would be able to, in uh, her or his own way, receive uh, the tender, merciful love that you want to bring to uh, their heart, Lord, that each one would just know your loving gaze. And, Lord, each one would know the hope that you put within them that can never be taken from them. Each one would know the joy that you put within And may this Christmas be a moment of encounter in a new way with you, that the peace and joy that's of your heart, Lord, 
in the hearts of all those who turn to you. We thank you, Lord, and bless us with uh, uh, the, the insight, Lord, to see how much you love us and to respond wholeheartedly in these days that are leading into the wonderful celebration when you became flesh for our sake. Praise your name, Lord. Gosh, isn't he just full of so much wisdom? If you live in Australia and you haven't registered yet, can I invite you to join us for the Sisterhood National Catholic Women's Conference the 17th to the 19th of March next year in Sydney. Father Ken Buck will be speaking at the conference. He is a big supporter of what we do with Sisterhood and a spiritual father to many women who come to that event. So if you'd like to find out more or register, please visit the website www.sisterhood.org if you like what you hear on the genius podcast can i invite you to leave a review on the podcast platform this really helps to support the mission and the work of the genius project until next week ladies i hope and pray that you are able to press pause and really reflect on some of the themes that father ken and i discussed in this week's episode until next week have a beautiful week and god bless you